there's a search for greener, cheaper fuels. Currently, you're obviously using natural gas to burn things when you need a lot of temperature and you need a lot of energy density. Hydrogen is deemed to be the Swiss army of fuels, and they're trying to find a ways to produce hydrogen in a more efficient manner. The problem is that right now, hydrogen is produced mostly 99 plus percent from natural gas to steam, methane reforming. That's not a clean process. There are alternative ways to produce hydrogen through so-called electrolyzers. These are pieces of equipment that split water and create H2 and O, effectively splitting the H2O into hydrogen and oxygen molecules. That process typically is madly expensive. There are now new causes of electrolyzers that are coming that should be significantly cheaper and are aiming to produce it with clean, green electricity. There is a big battle ongoing between two types of hydrogen. One so-called gray or blue hydrogen produced from methane, and then with green hydrogen that is produced with electricity. When you're producing things out of natural gas, it doesn't almost matter whether you capture the CO2 at the end or not. You know, some people compare it to smoking and vaping, right? You just need to stop using uh, natural gas to produce hydrogen. It's, it's that simple. The other thing that needs to happen is we need to find the way to do it cost effectively. So with the cheapest possible electricity. And this is the second part of the battle that's happening. There are some companies, namely a lot of oil companies that are arguing that you just need to add electrolyzers anywhere on the grid. And if you produce hydrogen, that's great. The other sides of the, uh, the, the battlefront here, most notably environmental groups, they are saying, no, 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 no. You need to produce hydrogen out of clean gain electricity. This is a really, really important distinction. The other thing that needs to happen is we need to find a way to do it cost effectively. So with the cheapest possible electricity. You have two options. One is to produce a true green hydrogen, or you can produce something that I call green washed hydrogen out of any electricity. And this is, a, I think, a big fallacy. If you're using the coal and natural gas, burn it to create electricity and then further convert it to hydrogen, there's no point. It's actually much worse than actually just burning coal and gas. I don't think we should look any further than to the recent European Union directive that is exactly talking about this issue. If we want to truly produce green renewable hydrogen, we need to have a few things. A, it needs to be produced truly from renewables. B, there needs to be some sort of a time matching. So when you're actually producing renewables. Number three, there needs to be something called concept of additionality. Rather than just burning hydrogen and creating extra load on the grid, there needs to be new net renewables added to the grid to make this happen. For the short-term gain, we shouldn't lose the sight of the long-term game. And the long-term game is to finally make renewables be what they are, the only source of green production that we can potentially use on the grid. And that doesn't mean that it's just wind and solar. This could be also hydro and potentially also nuclear in certain instances. Some of the timelines, I think they're talking about 2030, 2032 are fairly long. The loophole there is the fear that this will just get you know, extended forever and there will never be truly time matching or localization matching implemented to the levels that we want. So I think that's something to watch out for. You know, these deadlines need to be hard and stringent and there's to be a clear transition towards producing hydrogen out of A, electrolysis and B, out of renewables that are basically carbon free or low carbon. Free.